up, hello to these scenes, Kenzie Retro here, and... Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our first big milestone. Are you Try that again. Hello, my fellow Life of Scenes. Kenzie Ratchio here. Uh, so yeah, from that intro, as you can tell, um, a few weeks ago, I managed to hit 100 subscribers. Woohoo! My first big milestone, and I honestly couldn't be happier. Uh, but yeah, so to celebrate that, I did a 100 subscriber special stream, just sort of like a mini stream on Forza Horizon 4 with the LEGO Speed Champions expansion. Excuse me. So, what are we going to be doing today for today's reaction? Well, it's a pleasant little video that I stumbled across uh, on uh, one of Watch Mojo's sister channels, Ms. Mojo to be exact. Uh, top 10 songs from Animaniacs. Now, looking back on this show, it was so funny, so well written. I never thought about all that at the time. But as you get older with those shows, you, you definitely appreciate how clever they were. And th there's one particular episode where they... Where they, yeah... Uh, <laughs> they just rip it out of William Shatner because of his terrible singing... Uh, uh, because of his terrible rendition of Rocket Man. And unsurprisingly, Animaniacs jumped on the bandwagon and decided to uh, make a mockery of it. Oh, wait, Daddy, it's a whole Star Trek gag thing! That's my best, that's my best impression of, uh, Cam China Warner Brothers. Everyone is to that. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, uh, because I'm, uh, because this is a, uh, top ten that I'm reacting to, um, which has footage that's, um, copyrighted, you know, and all that, all the copyright nonsense, yada, yada, yada. Uh, credit to the video goes to Ms. Mojo, who actually created the video, and their parent company, um, their parent channel, Watch Mojo. And, uh, because this is, uh, uh, this is licensed on, because the Animaniacs is licensed under Warner Brothers Television, uh, credit goes to Warner Brothers for the footage that, um, Ms. Mojo used for the show. Anyway, let's not waste any more time, let's get into this. <laughs> The pinky and the brain, yes, pinky and the brain. One is a genius, the other is insane. These songs are totally insane. -y. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most memorable songs from Animaniacs. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the catchiest songs from the animated musical comedy variety series, Animaniacs. I'm cute, yes it's true. I really can't help it, but what can I do when you're cute? <laughs> Number 10, The Monkey Song. That's it! Ah, the good feather. I actually mistook those pigeons for chickens. I'm not joking, that legitimately happened! I was speaking to some friends from church um, regarding uh, Animaniacs when I started singing uh, one of the songs that may or may not feature on this list later on. Anyway, uh, let's see, um, I mentioned that there was a group of characters that were making a parody out of um, uh, uh, the ch uh, it was Chicken Mafia, being a parody out of uh, the Mafia films, Good Fellas, I think it was. And it turned out it was actually Good Feathers. I made a huge blunder on that one. Anyway. You want to play the flute? Wait, I got your flute. Let's begin our list with a song from the very first episode of Animaniacs. Right from the start, this melody set the tone for many of the tunes that followed, as it's based on a classic song. 
In this case, Monkey, popularized by Harry Belafonte. One Monday morning, I got up late, and there were these monkeys outside the gate. The guards were to stop somebody, had no luck. The monkeys got free, and they are in a muck. The Animaniacs version sees the Austrian psychiatrist, Dr. Scratch and Sniff, contending with the Warner siblings, whom he calls <laughs> monkeys pestering him, leading to a chase around the Warner movie lot. The visuals feature cameos from nearly every other main character in the show. And the tropical beat and repetitive chorus help make the song a catchy one. The monkeys dance, then I dance too. Don't know what to say, the monkeys won't do. Number 9. <laughs> Variety Speak While waiting to see the aforementioned psychiatrist in one episode, Yakko asks to borrow a paper, as part of a gag that Wacko is a dog and isn't housebroken. Play dead. Go. Is this the end of Little Rico? <laughs> <laughs> now speak! My fellow Americans, I am not a crook. <laughs> when Wacko is puzzled by the language used in the entertainment paper Variety, Yakko and Dot launch into a song explaining the strange lingo often employed by Hollywood. In Hollywood, they have a different language that they speak. It's spoken by those folks who went to school for just one week. What follows is a snappy song that takes shots at the movie industry and those who review films. <laughs> Full of meta references and entertaining lyrics. Wait a minute. Reviews movies? Oh my word. What if they come after me in the reboot? <laughs> yes, they are actually rebooting Animaniacs, by the way, folks. Hopefully they get the original cast in. Well, a majority of the original cast, if you, you know what I mean. Variety Speak is a wonderfully memorable musical parody of Hollywood. If you want the poop or you need the scoop on Hollywood Town this week, you're gonna have to learn to talk. Number eight, <laughs> a quake, a quake. A quake, a quake, the house begins to shake. You're bouncing across the floor and watching all your dishes break. Set to the <laughs> tune of Robert Schumann's The Happy Farmer, A Quake, A Quake is about the 1994 Northridge earthquake that occurred in Los Angeles, California. Whose fault? Whose fault? The San Andreas's fault. Cause Mr. Richter can't predict her kicking our asphalt. Despite being about a natural disaster, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot manage to sing a song that's both funny, as it comically exaggerates the consequences of a quake and the dangers of living in California, while also being surprisingly informative. California's great, it's such a lovely state, and every lawn is sitting on a continental plate. The rapid fire lyrics and visuals are a treat, and the simple melody will make you want to shake at least one part of your body. Number 7, The Ballad of Magellan. There once was a man, his name was Magellan, a Portuguese skipper, the girls found him cute. He sailed with five ships to find the East Indies, then come back to Spain with a bounty of loot. Led by Yakko, the Warners sing this educational song about the titular Portuguese explorer to the tune of the classic Western song, Get Along Little Doggies. Is there any song they don't um, take the tune from? Chronicling the famed explorer's voyages to locate the East Indies, the Ballad of Magellan pairs the rollicking melody with comedic lyrics that make light of the lengthy and arduous journey by showing Magellan's increasing frustration at his lack of success. We'll be tired, I -O, settle down, Magellan. Put down that X, there's no time to despair. With a surprisingly <laughs> dark ending given that they cover Magellan's death at the hands of islanders. Magellan was pleased as the natives drew near, but then someone shouted, I think they're attacking. Magellan said, what? And got hit by a spear. <laughs> the Ballad of Magellan oh. marries the Warners a reverent mockery, an old melody, and educational material, which all make for an excellent Animaniac song. Number six, I'm mad. I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm really, really, really mad. Another musical interlude featuring Dr. Scratch and Sniff, this time the distraught doctor attempts to herd the Warner siblings into a day trip to an amusement park, with Yakko and Dot arguing the whole way, and Wacko complaining constantly. Every time we get into the car, it's so much work. It takes us 20 minutes while you're driving me berserk. The song's length, back and forth rhyming dialogue, manic energy, and tone that evokes a feeling of increasing madness or irritation help make it an especially memorable experience. I'm Mad was actually aired in theaters as a theatrical short before appearing in the show proper, making it one of the few Animaniacs appearances on the big screen. Well, the Are we there yet? I'm tired. I'm hungry. How far? My nose is snotty. Need to move my body. Gotta use the party. Better stop the car. Stop it! Number 5. <laughs> Yakko's Universe 
It's a great big universe and we're all really puny. We're just tiny little specks about the size of Mickey Rooney. It's big and black and icky and we are small and dinky. It's a big universe and we're not. Likely inspired by the Galaxy song from Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Th there's another song that they pay homage to. What the flip? Yakko's universe sees the title character singing first about planet Earth, then the Milky Way galaxy, then the entire universe. Cause there's a hundred billion galaxies that stretch across the sky filled with constellations, planets, moons, and stars. And still the universe extends to a place that never ends, which is maybe just inside a little jar. All while emphasizing how small we are in the grand scheme of things and taking repeated shots at Mickey Rooney's height in the process, before being joined by Wacko and Dot for the finale. Informative, enchanting, philosophical, and ultimately optimistic, Yakko's universe is a rollicking romp through the cosmos that you won't soon forget. Though we don't know how we got here, we're an important part here, it's a big universe, and it's ours. Number four, The President's Song. Here we go. Do you know? The names Into of the U.S. residents who then became the president. Arranged to the tune of the famous the opera overture turned popular American marching song, the William Tell Overture. <coughs> and uh, I shall now eloquently demonstrate what they mean by this. George Washington was the first you see. He was chopped down a cherry tree. Number two would be the... Uh, uh, we'll stop down at Jerry Tree, and next thing that would be the next John Adams and the number three. Tom Jefferson stayed up to write the Declaration later. And his wife had a great big fight, and she made him sleep on the couch all night. The President's Song features the Warners singing about each President of the United States of America in chronological order, at least up until Bill Clinton, while also touching on world or national events the head of state had to contend with. Up to bat comes old Abe Lincoln, there's a guy who's really thinking, kept the United States from shrinking, saved the ship of state from sinking. At times informative, <laughs> while others comedic, the President's Song is an irreverent look at the history of the U.S. and its leaders, couched in a familiar patriotic melody that you may just find yourself singing to yourself the next time you hear the theme it's based on. The next president to lead the way, well it just might be yourself one day, then the press will distort everything you say. So just in the fly away, bop bop bop. Wacko's America. Oh, While this receiving is another an one of my unusual favorites. lesson at school where they play a version of Jeopardy akin to the real game show, Wacko <laughs> was asked to name all the United States of America and their capital cities. Here, Here goes. goes! Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Columbus is the capital of Ohio. While playing the fiddle to the tune of the famous folk song, song Turkey in the Straw, Wacko proceeds to do just Another that, song. using fun facts about the locales and some creative license with pronunciation and word order to get the whole thing to rhyme. That just shows you how very well written this show was. Not just the episodes, but the songs! That just shows how well written they were! Carolina with Columbia down the way And Annapolis and Maryland on Chesapeake Bay They have wonderful clown chowder. Wacko's <laughs> America combines an energetic and familiar song with instructional visuals to create a song that had us tapping our toes and helped many of us pass U.S. geography. That's all the capitals there are Shave and haircut, two bits. Huh? Number two Wait a minute, I got this wrong? What, what, what? Oh, wait a minute. Of course, because it's Jeopardy, you've got to give your answer in the form of a question. L. Two, Yakko's World. Oh, goody! Here we go. And I was literally practicing this before we went on the air. And now, and now the nations, the nations of, the world, of the world. Brought to you by Yakko Water. One of the most... <laughs> Hold up, narrator. Uh, let me just get a... <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Let's see if I can find... There we go, there it is. <laughs> I've actually got the first verse down uh, pretty much perfectly. <clears throat> actually, shall I do the first two verses? Let's give it a go! <clears throat> And now, the nations of the world, brought to you by Kenzie Retro! 
United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, to Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guyana, and still Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and then go to Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Belize, Nicaragua, Bermuda, Bahamas, Tagalog, San Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Syria, Mexico, Barbados, and Guam. First two. Norway and Sweden and Iceland and Finland and Germany now in one piece Switzerland, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Italy, Turkey and Greece Poland, Romania, Scotland, Albania, Ireland, Russia, Oman Bulgaria, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, Cyprus, Iraq and Iran There's Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, Bosnia, Yemen, Kuwait and Bahrain The Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium and Portugal, France, England, Denmark and Spain Super! <laughs> I need to work on the- I need to- I need to work on the next two. <laughs> Famous and mimetic songs to come out of Animaniacs, Yakko's World features Yakko Warner singing the names of the countries of the world in rapid succession to the tune of Jarabe Tapatio, also known as the Mexican Hat Dance Song. Honduras, Guyana, and still, Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and Ecuador, Chile, Brazil. The song proved so popular, it was referenced several times in the show itself, okay. such as the similar song that sees Yakko try to sing all the words in the English language. <laughs> Yakko's now at the L's as he tries to sing all the words in the English language. A slight mistake at the F's. Here's what it looked like. Facial and faction and fractal and fraction and fraudulent fragrant frappe. Frankincense, 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 shoot, yada yada flamme. Yakko's breathless delivery may contain several omissions and errors, and certainly is not up to date, but it's still immensely fun to sing. Plus, Yakko's so actor Edward, Rob Paulson has sung an updated version more recently, with some of the countries created since it was originally written. Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Yugoslavia. Cream, Mauritania, then Pennsylvania, Monaco, Liechtenstein, Malta, and Palestine, Fiji, Australia, Sudan. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to have all of these songs stuck in my head all day. Now, I know number two was very popular with the internet crowd, but do you yep. have any idea what number one is? It's not that shocking if you think about it. But if you want to see what we did put at number one, just wait until after these honorable mentions to go. find out. I am the very model of a cartoon individual, my aunt. <laughs> the first time I actually heard this tune was... <laughs> was in Mass Effect 2 with Morden Solis going, I am the very model of a scientist Solarian, a starter species Turian, a sorry Epitarian. <laughs> oh, I'm gutted this one didn't make the list. <laughs> because it's absolutely brilliant. Animations comical, unusual, and whimsical. I'm quite adept at funny gags, comedic theory. I have read from wicked puns and stupid jokes to anvils that drop on your head. <laughs> see what that was? Oh, oh, it's multiplication. It's math education. Hey, Albert Einstein said that it's so easy to do. It's simple, it's breezy. <laughs> It's fun and it's easy. Just buy a calculator. You can multiply too. She has several PhDs. Oh, Speaks nice running gag here. Yeah. And the shoes will always match with a bus. Whatever street she's walking down, everybody turns around and says, Hello! Hello. Nice. We're not bees and we're not cats or bugs or horses or things like that. What we are is clear and absolute. What we are, dear doctor, is cute! Our sense of dread as singing this song that is starting to turn out completely all wrong and it's time that we end it because it's too long! <laughs> Cause it just doesn't make any sense! Nonsense! <laughs> this song doesn't make any sense! Number one, the Animaniacs theme. Was well, there any doubt what the number one would be, folks? Nah, I didn't think so. We say me to the max. As great as all of these songs are, it doesn't get much more memorable than the Animaniacs theme song, as it begins basically every episode. The Warner siblings sing this incredibly catchy song, providing exposition on their basic characters, as well as those of the rest of the main cast. Peppered throughout are clever rhymes and gags that break the fourth wall, which really helps set the tone for the entire show. There you go, there's a fourth wall break right there. I didn't pick up on these fourth wall breaks when I was younger. Mind you, most kids didn't. But kids these days, my word, how are they so clued up on all this? 
Plus, there's a variable lyric towards the end that changes between episodes. This isn't just the most memorable song from Animaniacs. It's also one of the catchiest cartoon theme songs ever. She's Those no, are the no. facts. Do you agree with our picks? Yeah, I would definitely say so. I would definitely say so. Ooh, hello, best Alan Menken musicals. The fact that Hercules is on the thumbnail. Two reactions in one day? Why not? Let's go.